As we have seen in recent weeks in both our Sunday school lessons and in my sermons, the Lord, he gave the world his only begotten son in order to share with us the divine truth. If we were to adhere to the divine truth, if we were to listen to it, if we were to receive the divine truth, then we would become holy and righteous. We would become worthy to be able to enter into the kingdom of God. In a very familiar passage of scripture that I just preached from a few weeks ago, we'll see where Jesus teaches the parable of the wheat and the tares. In the opening verse here, Jesus, he tells us that the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sold good seed in his field. The good man, of course, represents Christ. Now, after the man had finished sowing seed in his field, Jesus said that while men slept, not the same man, but while men slept, his enemy came into his field and also sowed seed. But rather than sowing the same seed, the enemy sowed tares. The enemy, we should understand, represents the devil, represents Satan. We should understand as well that the field that both Jesus has sown seed in and that the devil has sown seed in is representative of us. It is representative of the world. The seed that has been sown by Jesus is representative of the word of God. The seed that is sown by the devil is representative of his own doctrine. The devil, he has sown seeds of wickedness. We should understand as well that when it comes to the word of God, the word of God, it is only able to take root in good and fertile ground, which is representative of our hearts. If your heart is open to receiving the word of God, then the word of God will be planted in you. It will take root in you. It will grow in you as well. Jesus expressed this to us in his telling of the parable of the sower at the start of this chapter. You see, some hearts are like the wayside and that the word of God, it is snatched away from them. Other hearts are like stony ground where the word of God is simply unable to take root. The seed either bounces off the stones or it is scorched by the sun. Then there are other hearts that's like thorny surfaces where the word of God is choked out because of their love for the world. When we take a look at what Jesus states there, there's something very sad that we may overlook. What is sad there is the fact that the word of God is only able to take root within a fourth of the field. What's sad about that is, again, when we look at that, not so figuratively, is that the word of God, Jesus says, is only able to take root within a fourth of the hearts that is in the world today. That's very sad. Now, why do I say that it's only able to take root within 25 or less than 25% of the hearts of all of those that are dwelling in the world? Well, again, there's four types of surfaces in the world as explained by Jesus. Only one slice of the pie, if you will, is able to actually receive the word of God. Then within that slice of good ground, Jesus tells us that Satan has also sown his seeds of wickedness. So this should make you wonder what kind of surface, what type of surface are you? In order for you to be able to answer that question, you have to determine whether or not you have truly received the word of God. What I mean by this, what I mean by truly having received the word of God is whether you are living your life being guided by the instructions of the Lord. Sadly, Many of us are like the men that slept while Satan sows his seeds all around us. The doctrine of Satan, it is filled with lies and deceptions, which sadly, many of us, we actually fall for. There are many people in the world today who lives by worldly doctrine, a doctrine of selfishness, a doctrine of greed, rather than by the doctrine of the word of God, a doctrine that is of unselfish love. Even worse, 
is because Satan has sown his seed in the good and fertile ground, good hearts are infected by his doctrine. Good hearts can be open to receiving his word. It's just as Paul explained in his letter to the Ephesians when he was talking about spiritual warfare. Paul said that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Satan's doctrine, it is all over the place. It has even gotten inside of the heavenly places those places that we would consider worship places, churches. This is why in the parable, Jesus states that when the crop of the man, the certain man, the owner of the field began to sprout up, the tares began to appear as well. Satan's seed had also taken root on the good ground and it was growing with the good. So what does the Lord do about this? You and I, we both live in a world where the bad clearly grows with the good. So many of us, we begin to question, many of us, we begin to wonder, why does the Lord allow for bad? Why does the Lord allow for evil to exist? Why does he allow it to exist with the good? Now, some believe that God fell asleep to Satan's work, but the Lord, as Jesus tells us, he is fully aware of what Satan has and still is doing in the world today. When the man's servants noticed that the tares were growing with the good, they questioned whether they should go and pull up the tares. Now the owner of the field, he looked and he said to them, let them both grow together. Why, why does the owner of the field say this? Well, because the owner of the field did not want to uproot his crop. We should understand the reason that why the Lord allows for the bad to grow with the good is because he does not want to uproot the good that is in the world. God truly believes that the good that is in the world, that it can grow and that it can flourish. That is us. The Lord believes in you. He believes that you can still grow and that you can flourish in this world. The Lord, he wants us to bear holy and righteous fruit. And so he has no desires. He has no intentions of cutting us off before we become fruitful, before we can bear holy and righteous fruit. The Lord, yes, he could destroy the whole field. He could destroy the bad if he wanted to. But again, the Lord doesn't want to destroy you. God, again, he is fully confident in what you can do. So if God is confident that we can flourish, that we can grow in this world, that we can bear fruit in this world, then we too, we should be confident in ourselves and we should be confident in the Lord as well, that we can grow and that we can flourish in this world, even though we may be growing up along with the wicked that is in this world. In the next couple of verses there in the 31st and in the 32nd verse, we'll see that Jesus, he put forth another parable, the parable of the mustard seeds, something that I preached from just recently as well. In this parable, Jesus speaks of a tiny seed being sown. The word of God is like a tiny seed. Now, when we glance at these two verses, it will seem it's a good thing to be compared to a tree growing from such a tiny seed that the birds of the air are able to come and they are able to land on, they are able to take nest in. However, we'll notice that the tree that grows from the mustard seed in this parable we'll notice that it is void of fruit. There is no fruit there. The birds are able to nest in that tree, but there's nothing there for them to eat. They will have to fly off to another tree to find something else to eat. We, growing from the word of God, we should not grow void of fruit. The word of God, it should produce a fruit within us, a fruit that is again, holy and righteous. So we are more than the tree that grows from the mustard seed, because again, that tree, it is void of fruit. If we look at the mustard seed and the shrub that it produces, there's actually no real value in it. There's actually more value in the mustard seed itself when it has been ground up and mixed with water and vinegar and other liquids to create the condiment that we eat on our hamburgers and on our hot dogs. The word of God, again, as a tiny seed, it is of far more value. As again, we know that the word of God, it can produce holy and righteous fruit. The word of God, we also know is able to save souls as well. 
the word of God, it should never be ground up. Again, we should find more value in it because the word of God, it leads to holy and righteousness. Our lesson, it then comes to a close with Jesus likening the kingdom of heaven to a woman that hid three measures of leaven in the dough for bread. This is no good. You see, throughout scripture, leaven is always equated with sin. Leaven, or as we would better know it as, is yeast. We know it as an additive that we add to our dough to make the dough rise up. Spiritually speaking, when leaven is mentioned in scripture as an additive to us, it is an additive that actually corrupts. It is an additive that actually defiles. As Paul said in his first letter to the Corinthians, we should purge out the old leaven within us so that we become a new lump. We should be unleavened, like unleavened bread. Now, what is the leaven that Paul spoke of there? The leaven is sin. That is Satan's doctrine. We should purge malice and wickedness out from within us. And we should move with the unleavened bread of sincerity, Paul said, and trusts. There should be no additive within us, nor should there be any additive to the word of God itself. Yet again, the kingdom of heaven is like the woman in Jesus' parable, that he had three measures of leaven within it. The kingdom of heaven, as Jesus speaks of it in this passage of scripture, is speaking to the condition of the field. That is again, the world. That is again, our hearts. Worldly doctrine is the leaven to our heart. It is a doctrine that corrupts our soul. Our soul, it should be pure. Satan has sown and still sowed seeds of his doctrine throughout the world today. And there are people that use the doctrine as leaven to corrupt the word of God and then the hearts of all of those that are around them. While we often comment that the world is getting worse and worse, and it likely is, we must also come to understand that the Lord has left us in the world for a reason, right? God has left us here so that we who are holy and righteous, we who are good, so that we can continue to grow in the world. So as the world is getting worse and worse all the time, the world at the same time has good in it. So the world should be getting better and better all the time as well. So again, so long as we abide by the word of God, so long as the word of God is growing in us, we should also understand that we are going to grow taller than any tree in the forest. Not only do we grow taller than any tree in the world, we produce a fruit that the world's trees are unable to produce. We are able to produce a fruit that is holy and righteous, a fruit that is not corrupt, a fruit that is ripe, a fruit that when it is eaten, it is able to produce and give life to all of those who consume it. Life, I want you to understand that I'm talking about today is not life that is of the world, I'm talking about life spiritually. As Jesus said back again in the parable of the wheat and the tares in the 29th and the 30th verse, one day the Lord is coming for his harvest. God is coming for his harvest. Now, what is it? What will he harvest? The Lord, he is going to harvest the holy and the righteous fruit that has grown from the seed that was sown by Christ. The tares, they will finally be pulled up they will be bound together and they will be cast into the fire to be burned. So you and I, all of us who genuinely believe in the Lord today, you and I, we are in this world to bear good fruit. We are in this world to bear holy and righteous fruit. The only way that you and I can bear holy and righteous fruit is if we abide by the word of God. That is, if the word of God has taken root in us. That is, if we have truly received the word of God. So I encourage you today, I encourage all of you today to be open to receiving the word of God so that you can become holy and righteous, so that you can bear good fruit that is again holy and righteous, so that all of those that are around you, so that they can consume that fruit and so that they can become holy and righteous and bear that holy and righteous fruit as well and then share it with all of those that are around them. That is how good actually grows in our world. So again, be open to receiving the word of God. Be open to living by the word of God. It will do you good. 
and it will do the world good as well.